Hello viewers, this is KSN and Media. I have for you a tutorial on kit bashing in StarCraft 2. What I want to start off by saying is that kit bashing in other games works similarly, but this is specifically a StarCraft 2 tutorial. Um, you can apply some of the methods that I use in other games, but the tools I'll be using and the models I'll be handling are from StarCraft 2, which don't exactly apply to all games out there. In fact, I think these export tools and import tools and and the material managers and all that only apply to StarCraft or Blizzard games at large. So what I have here, I have a base um, mesh. I have already kit bashed it uh, for the sake of this video and because I was going to release it on my assets page anyway. Um, I have the armature object. Armature objects are just the Exactly that, armature objects for the mesh that control how it moves and animates and, you know, responds to IK, physics, all those, all those kind of things. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I have all these separate meshes here. So, it's important to note, um, I'm using the uh, M3 add-on from TALV in the StarCraft 2 Master Discord. Uh, it's a pin message, but I'll put it in the description anyway. If you want to use it, give it a shot. Um, Blender is my preferred tool of choice for kit bashing StarCraft 2 models, mainly because um, it doesn't tend to destroy the animations the way sometimes 3ds Max will. Um, that's it's never a dry moment trying to import something into 3ds Max and find that it's floating into the heavens when you try to play any animation. Um, so that often ruins a lot of work. So I always test the animations before I use them in Max, but in Blender, oftentimes they work okay. Um, as long as you import the main animation mesh first. So what I did here is since I'm going to be modifying the Heaven's Devil, uh, Blaze Fire Mat, I imported that first. And then I imported my extra parts. Um... I recommend that you uh, edit all the parts you want to add on to something outside of the main document. So what I have here, I have a bunch of models here that I've already parented to the mesh. Um, these are not from the original model. That's why they're under this armature object, because I had to parent them from outside. But when they were imported in, they were imported in as an M3 uh, model with no animations um, or with no armature objects. Uh, animations that don't apply or have no armature will not be shown in game. Um, they'll be listed in animation lists, but um, the objects themselves won't really won't really use them, or the main the main unit itself won't really use them because the only thing that actually has any sort of motion attached to it is this armature object because the others don't exist. You delete them. So, fine, we're, we're in the clear there. So, I want to go into import and I want to show you this um, model animation thing. So, you can go into your files and see I have a bunch of things here, which leads me to my next point. Uh, in addition to Talv's, um the M3 add on for 2.8, for Blender 2.8, there's something called Cast Fever. And what Cast Viewer does is allow you to in bulk extract and view data from the game. Uh, with patch 3.0, um, a few years ago, StarCraft 2's data storage, uh, three, three, the game information, the way it's stored, uh, changed to Cask. Um, <coughs> so. This uh, this cast viewer is just to allow you to bulk export a bunch of things. The StarCraft 2 editor, of course, has its own, but if you're editing a large amount of things at once and you want a whole repository, use cast viewer. If you don't mind just ex exporting as you go along, little by little, use the use what they got in game. That's that works fine too. Um, if you're going to be installing any of your add-ons, it's in preferences here. So I already have M3 import export, M3 add-on for M3 format. That's all good. So now to the on uh, now onwards to the mesh. Um, let's go to the object properties 
with the armature object highlighted, select in front. So in front will let you see all the bones. This is going to be important for weight painting because sometimes blender models, they tend to get messed up in terms of the mesh being deformed because of how weights are handled in Blender. This is not always an issue, except for like Dark Templar, which are totally destroyed. But um, you, can, you can always fix these uh, by weight painting. I'll do that in a separate video with a, with a simple model. But for now, um, I, want, I want to run you guys through what I have here. So static meshes, this means they, they weren't imported with an armature on them, which is ideal. Um, so I have them all positioned here beforehand, but um, I want I want to I want to stress the importance. So I didn't know when I was first starting this was the uh, pose position. This is very important for how the weights are applied, um, how the automatic weights are applied. So I'm going to show you guys what I mean by automatic weights. Um, Always set to rest position. Please, please, please. You will screw things up a lot for yourself. A lot. If you set pose position. And then you put a some you you try to do a little rotation here. Uh, you rotate this, position it very precisely to match the exact alignment, and then you parent it, and then you destroy everything. Do not do that. <coughs> Just hit rest position, make your life way easier. Alright. So If I want to clear the parent, so I'm going to hit Alt-P, clear parent. I'm going to go back, static mesh here, selected, uh, with, with it selected first. I'm going to then select armature object, and in rest position, we're going to hit Control-P, automatic weights. So if I go into pose position, it just, it animates correctly. You can see the shoulder pads work fine, um, just as intended. What I like to do is hide my armature object, so you can can make things a lot easier on yourself if you don't have all that netting in the way. But um, fundamentally, if you want to take bits and pieces from a model, you're going to go into edit mode with the model selected, of course, and you're just going to hit L. Just hit L. It'll select elements. Uh, if you're familiar with 3ds Max elements, groups of similar vertices with similar weighting, motion properties yada 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 um select your chunks separate them with p and then save it as a separate file when you have your kit bash target say this fire bat here take the uh the separated pieces i usually export them as m3 uh re-import them back into your base document target document right in the position that they were last time so if i were to export if i were to delete the armature here which i'm not going to do but if i were to delete it and export this whole thing it would it would be re-importable as its own static object so i could in theory just delete i could re-import this whole the the blaze model delete every single mesh, keep the armature object, re-import this piece that we have here with no armature, and then parent it all just just fine. That's a complicated way of doing it, but that's what that's fundamentally what, what you're going to be doing. The video is basically done here. Um, I'm just going to be showing you guys a little extra, just for demonstration's sake. So right now, what we have here is the shaded view. Right, so let's select that fire bat blade. So you can see this is green, right? I'm going to be using my custom textures. Don't worry about these. It's okay to delete them. Don't sweat it at all. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Let 
These are mostly relevant. They'll reset themselves. They don't affect the way the model looks in game. I do this all the time. And we are almost go. Okay. So I'm going to be re-importing textures here just so I can see how they end up in game. This doesn't delete the paths, right? If I go into materials and I go into material layers, it still has the path here. So it's still going to be looking for that image. These are just the node views to see how they appear in game because sometimes they're not displaying correctly like, like they were there. So I'm going to go into my folder and 2020 modeling. Yes. And I have talks about body. So Firebat Blaze 1 uses talks about body co-op diffuse. That's his diffuse map. We're just going to experiment with that node here. Alright. So we got that Python kind of toxic look to it. And we have the emissive. So this is just to preview the textures that, you ha that you're going to be putting in. I already have the normal maps. Or the, the normal maps are the same. Fundamentally, for any kit bash, your normal maps are going to be the same as the internal path from the, uh, from the game itself. Unless you're making specific model edits or taking things that have normals that are not from the game. Or maybe you're just making your own normals. Um, you join all the meshes, you make your own one normal map. I don't really know how to do that. And it doesn't really hurt me to just import them separately um, makes the file size a little bigger it's a little bit messier but I don't know otherwise so so let's take a look at how our thing looks in the cutscene editor that way we can see different animations just to make sure things work correctly um, and then if need be we can go back and uh, correct them one thing I should note is that in Blender, there isn't much of a way to preview directly into the game. Um, so anytime you export a test, you need to rename it something differently or in the game's memory, it will just replace it with the, with the same name. So if I try to import, if I remove this and try to import something else with the name um, Toxic Bat, this would this would this would show up. Uh, my new model would not show up. All right, so it's looking good. I think everything is the way we want it. So let, we can go into our fidget. Yes, this works. Stand. Yep. All right. So I'd like to thank everyone for watching. All this can be found on StarCraft 2 Master. So I'm going to be uploading this file to StarCraft 2 Master. Uh, you can download it from there, use it for whatever you want. Um, but that's it. I'll see you all next time.